We have never given this award before. I think it was just invented. He's just a man of the world. Johns Hopkins University, Harvard University, then a Fulbright scholarship. Solomon Wolf Galam joined the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Pasadena. There, he met an up-and-comer who would become a friend for life, Andrew Viterbi. I spent most of the day with him uh, making sure that he attended to, attended to such basic things as uh, finding a place to live, perhaps most importantly, making sure that he got on the JPL payroll right away. Then in 1963, Dr. Galam walked onto the USC campus. Well, the school is unrecognizable uh, in pretty much every respect. The quality of the students has improved very dramatically, especially during the last 20 years. I really didn't know who he was at the time, so it was really just, I was looking for people to do research with. So I emailed him a few times and he responded, then you know, I emailed him two more times and never got a response. And then I call him one day and say, oh yeah, just come to my office now. So I just went to his office and then he just started telling me about what he did. And probably an hour or two later, he's, you know, started doing work. So he started giving me problems and things like that. He is a, a member of multiple academies, National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Engineering. He has not only uh, distinguished himself in uh, science, but he also has uh, mentored and advised uh, department chairs, deans, presidents. Dr. Galam also has a keen sense of humor. <laughs> okay, so this is, I, I never seen uh, um, uh, Saul wear number 45. 45 means linebacker, is that what it is? So he's probably, you know, blocking for or attacking the quarterback. <laughs> I've never seen him do that, but I, no, I would not be surprised if he's able to do that as well. Whoever came up with that idea, they should get an award. That was not my idea. When USC distributes what are basically recruiting brochures to high school seniors. This was the idea they came up with, and after four years, I probably lost my NC2A eligibility. He's, he's very, very interested in puzzles and games and the mathematical description of how you analyze these things. And then the game that inspired Tetris, which is actually one of the biggest things I realized that, you know, he created this game called Polyominoes, which is basically, you know, how do you fit together shapes that are, you know, some n number of block, n number of squares in any configuration. I think he knows, I've, you know, heard anecdotally that he knows like seven or eight languages. I think he does speak many languages. I, I probably couldn't uh, count all of them. In February, we spent a lot of time together in Israel, visiting Israel with a USC delegation. One memento that I got from the trip is he wrote my name in like seven or eight different languages, and so I have kept it and I'm pretty sure this will be a collector's item. At some point in the future, I'll probably, uh, I, I don't, I, I will not sell it on eBay, but I will be tempted to sell it for, for a big sum of money. <laughs> Teaching doesn't really exist. What exists is learning. And the job of what we call the teacher is to assist the students in the process of learning. So that's what I try to do.